Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. We're back in the fish room. We're dealing with Mega Tank. This is my eight foot by four foot by three feet uh, wooden tank that I've built myself from scratch. We last uh, looked at this tank, we were doing the water test. So we filled it up about halfway. I've left it for five days. No leaks. You have no idea how happy that makes me. I'm very, very, very happy that there's no leaks. If you've looked at the previous videos, you've been with me, you know I'm doing things slightly different to the norm. I've not fiberglassed, I've not used pond armour, pond shield, anything like that. This is all done with liquid rubber and uh, liquid rubber tape stuff. Go back and look at the other videos if you want to find out what I'm going on about. So it's held for five days so far. I now need to do a lot of little niggly jobs just to get on to the next stage. So we need to put a brace on. Um, that means I can get it filled up full, uh, full water volume, full weight of all the water, make sure there's no leaks above where I have tested it so far before I start congratulating myself on my epic uh, choosing of technologies. So I'm draining it down now because before I put the brace on I want to put some of the plumbing and pipe work in place and get the filtration ready and if I'm draining it down I don't want to be filling it, draining it, filling it, draining it. If I'm going to drain it down now I'm going to get the substrate in and some of the decorations. So maybe some sand, wood and rocks we're talking at the moment. No plants yet, because I haven't yet decided what we're actually going to keep in here and there might be fish that will think plants are a tasty snack. And if I want to fill this with an aquascape, that would cost hundreds and hundreds and hundreds worth of plants and I don't want to then choose Oscars and they go around munching them all. So just hardscape, get it filled back up, brace on, filtration running, give it a week, make sure there are no leaks anywhere and then we're kind of good to go. So first job, get this drained, we're draining it out now, I'm just draining it out to the driveway, get a brace cut and made, um, get a lid ordered because there's going to be a lot of evaporation from a tank this size. Um, yeah, let's see how we got on. So job number one, I've got this brace, just a, a scrap piece of three by two or whatever it is, cut that to size and that's the beauty of the wooden tanks is Basically, you can just screw anything to them. You don't need to worry about epoxying or gluing or siliconing. Drill big, massive screws through there, and that will act as a really good brace. So what I need to do is give this a coating of the liquid rubber itself because condensation and things will get all over this. So I'm going to coat this in liquid rubber. I'm going to go around the top and give everything another coat of liquid rubber on that. And that should be job number one done. I'm noticing as I start to drain this tank down that the bit that's been underwater of the liquid rubber. So up here, this is stuff that hasn't yet been wet black. The stuff that's been underwater has turned brown. Uh, I did hear stuff about this. Apparently it's perfectly normal. I just forgot that was going to happen because this is that's the colour it is. I don't know if you can see this on the camera very well, but that's the colour it is when it goes on wet and it dries to black, but then obviously when it gets in contact with water it goes brown again. She's just, it's weird, it's disconcerting, <laughs> but apparently it's normal, it will eventually go back to black. Um, yeah, just thought I'd mention it. Okay, a couple of hours later, the tank is drained, everything's painted up now, we've added the centre brace, um, so it's not going anywhere, I think that's what we have to say when you do things like this. Next stage is, I'm going to have a look at pipe work for the filtration. Um, this side of the tank is going to be where both the overflows and the returns are going to come back into the tank. Um, so I've got these overflows, I've got some 40 mil bulkheads, I think they're 40, and I think 25 returns or 32, I can't remember. So smaller returns, larger overflows. And these are basically just straight through bulkheads, so screw threaded. Have done this in advance. Um, so basically, take a hole saw, which I have somewhere. I'm going to have two overflows, slightly staggered, but I'm going to keep them at the same level in the tank. But then I'm going to stagger them with the pipework on the inside and have a little bit of a an elbow on one of them, so as I can set the water level to where I want it to be. Um, get these fitted, so I'll have overflow, return, return, overflow along the length of that wall. Not that I'm particularly nervous about this, but this is the bit that I could royally cock it up if I get it wrong. Oh. And I can mostly get it wrong just by screwing in the wrong place. Um, so I'm going to measure 15 times, drill once. 
see how it goes. So I'm going to pick a spot basically and go for it. I'm going to have overflow here, return, return, overflow. Um, I think that'll work best. I'm kind of trying to keep it as neat as possible. It's near the top of where I want it to be so I don't have to do too much inside. But I think roughly here is as good a place as any. So these are straight through um, bulkheads. You get some that you attach two pieces together. This is just one piece. So my understanding is correct. The threaded bit goes on the outside. And you clamp it on. But to be fair, there are people on the internet that argue both cases. So I don't think it really matters what side the threads go on. But it's just I'm getting everything hand tight at the moment. But that's a good fit. Success. Great success. I am going around and just silicon everything. Um, one of the things about liquid rubber is they say you can't sil you can't use silicon. It's not true. You can use silicon. What they say is you can't bond the liquid rubber on top of silicon, but you can bond silicon on top of the liquid rubber. So that's the first one in place. I'll go over and do the rest of them. Right, new day, uh, a few more updates. We've got all the water out, we've got all the fittings in, so they're all dry fitted at the moment. Uh, so still got to solvent weld them all in place, get the sump sorted out underneath. But we've got all the water out. That's kind of the main objective. I've started adding sand, uh, just using sand as a substrate. So far we've got about 70 kilos of kiln dried paving slab sand. Um, it's what I've used in most of my tanks. And <laughs> it's basically given me a fine dusting on the ground, on the, the base of the tank. So I need a bit more. So we've got another, uh, what's this, 30, 60, another 90 kilos of uh, play sand, which we'll mix in as well. So just get all that in and then we'll see where we're at. Lots of cutting bags of sand. Maybe as you can tell, I'm not bothering to wash this sand. I know lots of people go on about how you need to rinse sand forever and ever. I generally don't anyway, and I've never had a problem with it before, but I'm not bothering this time either because I'm going to fill this tank and let it run for another three, four, five days, however long I need to, because I've not had it full full to do a leak test. So I'm going to get it running, empty with no fish in it. Any dust that gets kicked up, that will be taken out during that five days of water test. Another little job while I'm doing this that I've completed is I've started to think about lighting. I'm going to go with these LED spotlights. I think there was five 20 and 30 watt versions. This is the 20 watt version and it's brighter than the sun so I think this will be good enough. I'm going to have two of these and mount them up on this beam above here shining down and I think you'll agree that lights up proper nice. This isn't going to be necessarily a planted tank or anything like that. It might have plants and things in there, but it'll be very much about the fish. The fish will be the stars of the show and that's what I want to see. So I'm hoping that'll do the trick. Or smash it to pieces. Or smash everything else to pieces. I was swithering whether to add gravel to this tank, or, but I'm just going to go with the sand because if I get the sand in, at least then I can get it filled. If I want to add gravel later, rocks, wood, any of that kind of stuff, that can all be added later. But adding sand after you've got the water in can be a bit of a pain sometimes. So filtration, the pipe work that we've done earlier, uh, the next little job is where's that pipe work going to go to? I want to run a sump on this, so I had a few ideas of things that I might do in the future. So this might be a temporary thing, but I'm basically going to use this big plastic tote. So this is about, I think it's 150 litres. Um, it's just the perfect size to fit underneath the tank. And I'm just going to run it as a very basic, very simple sump. So I'm going to use um, a couple of these Jap mat pads. Jap mat pads? I'm sure they've got a proper name, but I know them as Jap mat and basically use that to section off this um, here. I want to create one big section for the, the overflows to flow into and I'm going to have that as a kind of fluidized media bed with I've got a bunch of K1 media and various other things like that. So I'll put that in there 
and almost use it like a settlement chamber so all the crud can come in there I can let it settle down and then I can get my shop back in there and scoosh it out every now and again uh, then I'll have a, another section here for biological media I'll put in, I've got loads of alpha grog, bio bricks, bio home everything in there and then at the end I'll have a return pump which I don't have yet but I'll probably reuse the one that I've got upstairs at the moment that's not being used and that'll go in this section and it'll just be a very simple run that way along back into the tank and that might just be until I figure out something different I really wanted to get something um, similar to the tank itself and build it out of wood but wood's just so bloody expensive at the moment even the I think I would need three plywood sheets if I was going to make a four foot sump out of this and that's going to end up costing some like 60 odd quid and it's just not worth it so I'm reusing what I've got for the moment trying to save a few pennies where I can well it's full it's running it's been running for a couple of days now uh, touch wood no leaks all the pipe work working perfectly uh, the tanks holding to be honest it's running like a dream I must keep touching wood when I say things like that so obviously it's still a little bit cloudy but I'm going to have another couple of days of this uh, running which will, will clear up fine uh, I'm not heating it at the moment because like I say this is just this is just a running test so we'll get it running for a bit longer and then I, I'm already pretty happy that it's fine um, so I'm now getting to the exciting stage where I start to really think about what we're going to keep in here still some more jobs to do so I've got some twin wall polycarbonate uh, sheets that are coming which I'm going to make a lid out of that will sit on top because yeah it's going to lose a lot of water and that will help keep some heat in if I do want to keep it heated um, we've got power issues to sort out so we've got the lights up here plugged in over there we've got the pump down this side plugged in over there i'm going to run all this off the felix so i'm going to wall mount the felix up on this side somewhere on the back wall uh, and that will run the lights the heaters the pump anything else that i want to get in here i'll probably need to get some kind of wave maker um, or power head or something like that on this side just to get the circulation going the, the force of the pump there's a 6,000 no 8,000 liter per hour pump on this at the moment and it's doing a good job of getting the water across but there's no getting away from it this is a big volume of water I think more is better in this case so we'll get another uh, couple of pumps wave makers over that side get things moving around a bit better but I'm really happy with this I mean it's still a bit cloudy as I said but I really like the lights there's definitely a shimmer we've got that LED shimmer going on um, nothing's leaking which is the main thing everything looks really sturdy i'm very happy so there's obviously a good number of jobs to finish this off it's far from a finished tank but it's ready to accept its inhabitants i think uh, i've talked a little bit about decoration what we're going to do with this tank whether to leave it in this very rustic state uh, i won't be doing that but i don't know what to do yet I've, i thought about facing it all off with plywood sheets and making it a nice neat finish and putting some little, little windowsill edging around the window um, some people have suggested tiles, some people have suggested vinyl wrapping um, so if you get any ideas by all means let me know in the comments or come and join me on a Friday night and we can talk about it uh, I do a live stream every Friday, well almost every Friday at 9pm UK time um, but interested in your ideas, I am st uh, still can't quite pull the trigger on what fish I want to get in here but I'm almost there um, so you'll need to keep subscribed if you want to find out what eventually goes in here so as you can see clearing up but not quite clear um, but I'm happy that it will be good enough and um, down here at this side this so the filtration is all run from here this is the uh, oop, this is the pipe work with everything glued in place we've got the overflow return return overflow all going down there and feeding into this temporary sump which is just a big plastic tote that lives under there at the moment it's just full of um, like filter floss just to catch some of the sand and detritus and help clear everything out but I think that'll work quite well in terms of the pipework this side so this is what I meant by putting some 90 degree elbows and then I can change what height the water level's at by raising or lowering them and we've just got these 3D printed overflows to stop any fish or things blocking them uh, the two returns are just I'm not entirely convinced by them at the moment but one of them is like a, a vortex return random vortex and the other one's just like a duckbill one um, they're fine but I might change them for something later I might 3d print a spray bar or something like that 
So all in all, really happy with the progress now that we've started getting this back and moving again. Tons of fettling left to be done. Um, the sump's a little bit noisy at the minute. I don't really care because it's in the fish room, but I, I can tune that and t uh, tidy that up a little bit. Uh, some more decorative things. I've got to do the scaping, the hardscape. I think we're just going to go with rocks and wood to start with at least. Maybe some fake plants if I end up getting some big fish that will eat plants. Not entirely sure. But yeah, we're, we're kind of there, kind of ready to add fish. We might put in some initial test fish. Um, I was thinking about putting Humphrey in here because he's been in a very small tank for far too long so I might give him a bit of a play. But anything I put in there is going to be almost impossible to get back out again. Um, I dropped a few things in there. Even my even my big grabber doesn't actually reach all the way down to the bottom without me getting wet. So me getting in there with a the net to catch fish out is going to be a problem. So we might get something in just to allow me to test it in a bit of a longer term before I put in the final fish. I'm not sure. I've been testing the water constantly just to make sure there's nothing strange going on, nothing's leaching. Um, testing with every test kit that I've got basically, looking for things like pH changes and swings or anything else that might crop up that might point to, hmm, that might affect the health long term but so far nothing bad but it's only been a couple of days so we might get a couple of goldfish in here just because I wanted to keep goldfish anyway and um, just to get them started or maybe we'll get a single better and a snail I think we can just about cope with that as always thank you for joining me if you're interested in this kind of stuff please click that subscribe button something like 60% of the people that watch these videos are subscribed so the other 40% of you why not just click the button doesn't take much Thank you very much. As always, thank you for watching. 9pm uh, Fridays, UK time. Come and say hello, ask any questions you want to, find out the latest and greatest updates. And if not that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!